Hello! So it is September and September here where I am means the start of transitional weather and transitional weather for me means my skin is a little more picky than it usually is. This happens in the spring, this happens in the fall. I just find that my skin tends to not know what to do with itself when the weather is transitioning and I don't know if that's because where I live in the transitional months, it can go from 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 32 degrees Fahrenheit in a less than 24 hour period. And therefore the weather goes from super humid to super dry in a less than 24 hour period. And my skin's just like, what is happening? Or if this is just a universal thing, but it's always around these times of year that I think about the products that I lean on when my skin is feeling less than great. My skincare heroes, if you will. I talk a lot about my consistently used products, but I feel it is necessary for me to kind of update every now and then because things can change a little, my opinions can change a little, my, my go-tos can change a little. So today I'm going to be sharing with you not only the products that I lean on when my skin is feeling less than great, which is typical for me in transitional weather, but also some of the like tools, tools that I use. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna start out with products, like actual topical skincare products that you apply. Um, and I'm gonna go in the order that you would use these products. Oh, before I get into it, my skin type is combination. I am typically normal to dry. During the transitional and colder months, I lean a little bit more dry. I have very sensitive skin. I have acne, like clinically diagnosed acne. So transitional weather just kind of exacerbates that. It makes kind of all of my issues a little bit worse. So I try to keep everything as like gentle and calming as possible, but I try to have options for every scenario, right? So I'm gonna kind of touch on that. So for cleansers, the things that I look for in a cleanser when my skin is feeling compromised, less than great, etc., are number one, that it's non-drying. Like it has to be balanced. It has to be effective at cleansing the skin and actually removing makeup or dirt, etc. but it also has to have a nourishing balancing factor. So. Cleansers you should be washing completely off of your skin. They shouldn't be quote unquote hydrating because they shouldn't be remaining on your skin. They should be completely washed off. There are certain ingredients that can strip your skin. They can make your skin feel really dry, look flaky, etc. So a key component to a good cleanser for me, just generally, but especially when my skin is feeling compromised, is that it is balanced and it is not stripping or drying. And the second is that it's not like irritating in any other way. So for example, like fragrance can be a surface irritant for me. And I like to avoid that if at all possible generally, but especially when my skin is compromised. So I'm gonna show you three of my favorite cleansers here. One is an active cleanser. One is one that you could use for makeup removal or as a single cleanse, just depending. And then the other is just a standalone cleanser that is incredible, super gentle. So first is the foaming oil cleanser from Skin Fix. I've talked about this to no end. Like I, I literally have talked about this a thousand times. I've gone through several bottles of it. This is an oil cleanser that will remove all makeup, skincare, sunscreen, etc. But it's also really great as like a morning cleanse, especially if you're drier. This is like a hot tip from me to you. But when my skin is feeling really dry in the morning, I will cleanse with a balm cleanser. Just, you know, single cleanse, standalone. I'll just you know, do it, do the thing. And I I find that balm cleansers and oil cleansers are typically more balanced in the direction of drier skin. Like they don't stay on your skin. As I said, you should be washing them completely off, but they do not strip. They have, they typically have oils and butters in them that keep them from having that sudsy effect that can lead to dryness. I don't know. So oil cleanser, this is amazing. This is super gentle. It is so reliable. I also have several cleansing balms that are favorites. Uh, if you have any interest in knowing those, comment down below and I will definitely let you know. Active cleanser. So in these times when my skin is feeling a little bit compromised, a little bit not itself, I don't really love to use leave-on active treatments. So uh, exfoliant, vitamin C, etc. Like I my skin is sensitive anyway, so when it's having this exacerbated sensitization, I like to kind of confine my active usage. And one of the ways that I do that is by using cleansers that have actives in them. And when I say actives, I mean like exfoliating ingredients, ingredients that encourage cell turn turnover, basically any ingredient that can be irritating. I know that 
most ingredients have like an active property, like they do something, but just to explain what I mean by that. So one of the examples, one of my go-tos for that is the Shasta AHA wash from Holy Frog. So this is an AHA wash. It has that surface exfoliation benefit. But the reason that I like to confine uh, my usage of ingredients like this in some ways to the cleanser step is because when you're using a wash off product, you have so much more control over how exposed your skin is to an ingredient. Whereas when you use a leave on product, it sits on your skin for an undetermined amount of time. And while, you know, at some point it has completely soaked into the skin and it has done what it's going to do, uh, you could use more or less of a product and it not do the same things. So just the control factor for me and the fact that you wash it off and the exposure is completely limited to that one interaction it, may, it makes a difference for me. I have found that with this method, I do see benefits, but I don't see the irritation that I have seen from leave-on products. So this is a really gentle cleanser, but it does have that exfoliating benefit, and that's why I really love it. And lastly is just my go-to, I've talked about a thousand times, Holy Frog Toshmu. This is the most gentle cleanser I've ever used. It is a milky cleanser. It is so good. It's so good. I don't even, I, I don't feel like I need to say anything else. It's just really gentle cleanses the skin well, makes everything feel clean and ready and prepped, but it doesn't strip or dry or irritate at all. Now the only serum potentially irritating thing that I'm going to include in this is Holy Frog Halo. And the reason that I'm including this is specific to me because one of my issues, my chief complaint in my skin is acne and acne management is my key focus, like, and it always has been. Um, and this has BHA in it. Now, in terms of just generalizing this, I would recommend that you look at what your chief complaint is, what your main skincare concern is, and kind of target your inclusion in your little skincare hero box to fit what you're looking for. So if it is acne, what is your favorite ingredient to treat your acne at home? Um, if your major concern is hyperpigmentation or uh, fine lines or you know so on and so forth, figure out what your favorite way to target that is and figure out your favorite gentle option. Now, in these scenarios, I absolutely do not use this at abundance. Like, I use this minimally. I use it when I feel like my skin needs it, and I don't use it beyond that. Like, I don't do any, like, preventative acne stuff in these scenarios, right? I do use an acne medication, which can be considered a preventative, but outside of that, I don't add anything else in, right? So this is what I include. This is a multi-benefit serum. So it has AHAs and BHAs as well as a whole host of other ingredients that do other things. And this is a superstar. It's very gentle, but like I said, I don't abuse it. I don't use it a whole, whole lot. I just use it when I need it. And I do find that it really helps me. And this is a product that I can rely on because I don't find that it irritates my skin. Moisturizing. So in these in these specific moments where my skin is feeling less than 100%, my typical routine at night will be cleanse and moisturize. So the moisturization step is very key. Now these are just two. I actually rotate through a lot of moisturizers because it is one of my favorite steps actually. But this is one that is very beneficial, it's very hydrating, it makes your skin glowy, it's beautiful, and it is super luxurious, but it's not like exfoliating or extremely anything. Like it is a great moisturizer, right? So this is Honey Halo from Pharmacy. It is beautiful, the texture is beautiful, it is very, uh, it feels very restorative on the skin, it's very luxurious, it feels just beautiful, and you wake up with a glow the next day. I can't sing its praises enough, I love it. And then this Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair is like my bougie, my bougie choice. This is a serum and cream and it is one of the most soothing products I've ever used in my life. I am obsessed with it. It is everything I want in a product that is reparative and restorative. It is silky, it is buttery, it is luxurious, and it can take my skin from like a negative four to like an 85, which an 85 doesn't sound amazing, but when you were at a negative four before, it is incredible. I love this. I actually love this so much that this is empty and I've repurchased it. Now SPF. Uh, SPF might not seem like something that would save your skin, right? 
but SPF is one of, if not the most important step in your skincare routine. If you are using other skincare, you should be using SPF to ensure that you are getting the most benefit out of your skincare because the sun is your number one enemy when it comes to skin damage. I have actually learned that when my skin is feeling compromised, I really don't like to use chemical sunscreens, which is sad because I am historically a chemical sunscreen person. Um, I, I have never loved mineral sunscreens, but I have found some that I do love. Pharmacies, uh, Green Defense, this is great. It is hydrating without being like dewy. It is not drying. It doesn't cling to dry patches. It doesn't emphasize anything negative about my face. It's not super matte. It layers well underneath makeup. It just is very nice. It doesn't leave a white cast on me. None of these do. The Pipette Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. This is so good. I have gone through tube after tube of this. This is my most long-standing love affair with a mineral SPF for sure. It's just really good. It is hydrating. It does leave a bit of a dewy finish. It is so easy to spread and distribute without leaving patches or drying up or anything like that. And again, no white cast for me. I am I am fair, so keep that in mind. And then the Coco Kind Daily SPF. This is the newest one to me. I don't know why I was so surprised to love this, but I do love this. It's very, very good. Again, it's a little bit hydrating. As my skin leans on the drier side, I don't like drying or matte formulas, which is historically why I haven't been a great mineral SPF user. But this has all the attributes that I just mentioned, except for, again, this has more of the green defenses finish. It's not super dewy, but it's not matte. It's not dry or clingy or patchy or anything like that. It just distributes well and feels nice on the skin and does not irritate or break me out. A little extra is this Adaptogen Mist. This is a product that I would never say is necessary, but it is one that I absolutely love because it is a very light, very hydrating layer that is soothing and feels great on the skin. I use this on all manner of skin, clean skin, dirty skin, makeup ridden skin. Like I use this as a setting spray, as a prep spray. Like I, I don't know why I said I use it on dirty skin. I don't even know what that means, <laughs> but I use this all the time. Again, not necessary, kind of superfluous, I think. It doesn't do anything like incredible for me, but it is soothing and it is hydrating and I do love it. So as many of you all know, I have a discount code with skinstore.com. So whenever I talk about their products in one of my videos, I like to group them all together so that you know if you want to shop any of these products, you can use my discount code. And I put the links down in the description as I always do with everything. But just, just so you know why all of these are here and not lumped in with the other products. So the first two products from Skin Store that I would consider skincare heroes for me personally are both Color Science products, which I've talked about Color Science a zillion times. I love their SPFs. I love the wide array of products that they have. Um, they have, you know, everything from like multi-purpose eye cream with SPF. They have different formulations of base SPF. They have different colors, different shades. They have like a glowy version and a bronzy version and all kinds of things. I love Color Science. I think they make SPF kind of fun, which there are several brands that do that, but Color Science is one that does it for me. Like I really love their products. They work really well for me. So these are two from Skin Store that I have on hand that I absolutely love and I use all the time and can use no matter what. So the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. This is SPF 50, super great SPF. It has like a slight pinkish tint to it, which helps even out the skin tone, but it's otherwise untinted. Like it doesn't have coverage, but it just makes the skin look even and nice and it has that protection. This is a stick SPF. So this is great for on the go application. You can use it on your neck, your shoulders, your legs. You could use it on literally anything. It's smaller, so I would more recommend it for the facial area. But this is just really gentle, a really great SPF option. This product doesn't necessarily factor into like the sensitivity skin issue, but this is a skincare hero in that you should be using SPF on your lip. This is the Kula Sheer Mineral Lip Luxe in the shade Skinny Dip. This is a lip balm, a tinted lip balm. I'll put it on for you. And it has SPF 30 in it. So this is the tint. It's not like super tinted. It's not like a lipstick or anything. It's just sort of like a nudie peach color. And 
it's really beautiful, really nice. I actually have sensitive lips, like things make my lips break out. Like I get pimples along my lip line. So the fact that this works really well for me, has that SPF protection and doesn't irritate my lips is beautiful. Another absolute savior when my skin is in any condition, but especially when it's compromised and I'm breaking out are Mighty Patches from Hero Cosmetics. These are my favorite pimple patches. I've used all kinds of pimple patches over the years and these are, in my opinion, the best. So I only have one sheet left in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it so I can show it to you. Uh, but these are my favorites. These are the, um, the Invisible Plus patch, and they have like a little reservoir in them. I don't know if you can see like the, the different layers, like there's a flat layer and then a slightly raised layer in the center. These are, in my opinion, the best. If you have like a big white head and it's, you know, juicy, that sounds disgusting. But if you do, this type with the little reservoir with the raised bit are the best to use in my opinion. These are the best, these are the best. You should definitely, you should definitely. Like that's just, I'm gonna leave it at that. These are absolutely a must have in my life. I cannot live without them. This is the Spa Sciences Sonic Facial Exfoliant and Hair Removal System. So like I said earlier, when my skin is feeling compromised or difficult, I don't really like to use topical products that are potentially irritating, so I don't exfoliate as much. And this is one way that I can exfoliate without it setting my face on fire because this is really gentle and it also removes hair on your face. So not only does it exfoliate the surface, gets rid of dead skin cells, etc., but it also removes that hair. So it adds a new layer of smoothness. If you've never dermaplaned or, you know, had some type of facial hair removal done, it is very interesting. Like I had never previously done it until I had this tool and it's just really nice. It adds almost a different layer of smoothness to like makeup application and just the overall appearance of your skin. You don't realize how hairy your face is until you shave the hair off of your face. But this is gentle, it's really easy to use and it's something that I can use, especially in situations where I don't feel comfortable using like an AHA on my skin. I feel like this is a little bit more controlled. I, you know, you can use it very lightly. Do not press into your skin follow the instructions for sure, but I just don't have issues with this irritating my skin in ways that I do with topical skincare products, right? So this is a super cool tool and I am excited about it. You can shop all of the products I just mentioned at skinstore.com. I will list my discount code right here and I'll link everything down below. I know that this was supposed to be a video about like skincare heroes, things that keep your skin looking and feeling healthy and happy and at its best, right? But the fact of the matter is, that there is no shame in wearing makeup. There is no shame in wearing concealer if it makes you feel more confident in your skin. Who cares? I feel like there is so much, so much stuff out there. Like there are men on the internet talking about how women wear makeup and that makes them catfish and blah, blah, blah. And I just like, I don't care anymore. Uh, if, if you are breaking out, if your skin is not feeling at its best and some whacking some concealer over your face will make you feel better or foundation or whatever, you do it. You do it. They're like women, especially are criticized so often and so easily, especially on the internet. I just think that we should all band together and just not care anymore. <laughs> concealer is an amazing tool. Makeup is an amazing tool. Makeup is artistry and it's beautiful and it requires skill and commitment and time and effort. And a lot of people don't view it that way, but I do. Makeup is a way to make me feel better about myself on any given day. I don't think that I'm hideous without makeup. I don't think that I'm worthless without makeup. You should never think that either. You should never think either of those things. Makeup is something that we use to put a better foot forward, right? It's something that we use as a tool to walk with our heads a little bit higher. And I fully believe that it is there to emphasize what you already have. It is something that you can use to just enhance your life's experience. So if you don't have any of this stuff, if your skin is feeling difficult and you're not sure how to deal with it and you don't have a tool available to you in the moment and you wanna wear makeup, wear makeup. I feel like there's so much stigma, especially in the skincare community on the internet. Like there's this sense of entitlement to people who don't wear makeup. And it's like, you know, I feel you, I get you. Like if you don't wear makeup and you're proud of that, I'm proud of you. But at the same time, like I wear makeup a lot because I love makeup. It's not 
that I hate myself. It's not that I think I'm hideous. It's that makeup enhances my confidence. Makeup makes me happy. The routine of doing makeup gives me something. So yeah, this was a tangent that wasn't exactly related to any of the content of this video, but that is what I had to say. So wear that makeup if it makes you feel better or don't if you don't want to because you're beautiful no matter what. I'm just saying that we should stop be being critical of people for choosing to do what makes them happy in the moment because being a human being is hard and you know choosing to do things every day based specifically on your want and your desire and not based on outside influences and outside opinions honestly feels like an act of bravery sometimes <laughs> like yeah, I could go on. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. You're beautiful. I'm leaving it at that. You are a beautiful human being with or without surface irritation, pimples, blackheads, etc. You are a beautiful human being. You are. Okay, thank you so much for watching. As always, all of the products that I talked about will be listed down below. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.